Welcome to London Heathrow International Airport, where today we're flying with one of the world's most fun airlines. That's of course Virgin Atlantic, and today we're going to be on their signature upper class on the Airbus A350 on route to New York. Here at Virgin Atlantic's home at Heathrow Terminal 3, you complete your check-in formalities, and then you're welcome up this elevator into the dedicated security queue for Virgin Atlantic flights. Scan your boarding pass here and you're automatically through to an express security lane, at the end of which you'll find your yourself in Virgin Atlantic's flagship lounge, the Clubhouse. Now the Clubhouse is fitted with decor that's edgy and stylish, although still remaining luxurious enough for you to enjoy yourself as a business class passenger. There's a full service bar and on-demand a la carte dining, as well as a range of other interesting features that we'll go over shortly. For now, it's time to hit the bar and treat myself to a glass of champagne. After taking a few sips of the champagne, I decided to treat myself to a nice meal before boarding my flight. Now there is a mini buffet spread here in the Virgin Atlantic Clubhouse, but the real highlight is the a la carte menu, where there's a wide range of items such as a poke bowl and Southeast Asian style laksa. You also have the option of working off the calories here in the Virgin Atlantic Clubhouse's dedicated gym, which also features Peloton bikes. The fact that there's a gym in this lounge, it's pretty wild, it's pretty wild. And if you're more into recreation, you can head to the upper level of the clubhouse where there's an entire pool table for you to hustle a round of pool. And what's more, there's still a surprise going even further up. I've heard so many fun things about this garden. Let's go check it out. That's right, there's an entire rooftop garden here in the Virgin Atlantic Clubhouse where you can sip your drink and watch the planes as they take off and land. I've heard so many exciting things about this rooftop terrace, but to actually be here is something else. I mean, you can see two or three or four different runways on all sides. And to sip a drink up here and watch all the planes, I could spend hours up here, that's for sure. It was so interesting watching all the traffic here at the global hub that is London Heathrow, from the household names like British Airways and KLM, to more interesting occupants like Kenya Airways. Gotta say, this is pretty great, this is super fun, but we gotta go down to the gate before we miss our flights. Now the boarding gate was quite a trek away from the lounge, but eventually I made it there and boarded this Virgin Atlantic Airbus A350. Stepping into the business class cabin, I was immediately struck by the neon purple mood lighting which would be in place for the entire duration of the flight. I soon found myself settling into seat 8 Alpha for the evening, nestled here in the back of the business class cabin for the 7 hour journey over to New York. I'm excited for this one, Virgin Atlantic Upper Class. Taking a look around our surroundings, you have this entertainment screen in front of you that can be slid into place with the push of a button. And then similarly here, you've got your tray table that pops down with the push of a button. And then you gotta slide it over and rotate into place, although it is a bit of a struggle. The footwell is down beneath the entertainment screen. And then over on the aisle side, you've got an armrest that can be raised, as well as a partition that can be slid outwards for extra privacy. Meanwhile, your seat console consists of a reading light at the top here, and then there's a little storage cabinet as well as a surface space under which is a row of the seat controls. And lastly, the literature pocket and power and USB outlets are found down by your knees on the front side of the seat console. Pretty soon we began our takeoff roll, enjoying a view over London just to the sun was setting. And as we reached cruising altitude and began our westerly heading across the Atlantic, I took a look at the amenity kit here on Virgin Atlantic Upper Class, which is housed in this recyclable goodie bag. The kit itself was pretty light, but it did come with a nice range of creams and lotions from a brand called Ren Clean Skincare. One of the most striking things about flying Virgin Atlantic so far is the mood lighting, which has remained this vibrant shade of purple throughout the whole flight so far, from boarding now to takeoff. 
Beyond just the mood lighting though, what absolutely set the mood for a fantastic flight here in Virgin Upper Class was the onboard lounge. Located just behind the business class cabin, this is one of the most distinctive features of this product and I couldn't resist coming here to spend time before the crew even began their meal service. It's time for a drink here in the lounge. I gotta say, this is a pretty wild thing to be doing on a plane. I sipped on my rather powerful cocktail for a few minutes here in the lounge as I waited for the meal service to reach me in row 8. You know, I gotta say, among these sorts of unique aviation experiences that you can get in business class, not first class, just business class, this one on the Virgin Atlantic A350, this onboard lounge, where you can sip a drink and have some snacks, I gotta say, it's super unique. Alright, it's been lots of fun here in the lounge, but it's time to go back to my seat for dinner. Back into the cabin, back into my seat, my drink is snugly placed in the cabinet up here, and it was time for dinner, which began with an appetizer of grilled asparagus and quail's egg. This was good enough for what it was, I mean asparagus, but I wasn't too impressed with the dish in the end. Now the main course is served here on Virgin Atlantic Upper Class. I've gotten the garlic and prawn rice bowl. You guys know I love seafood, so I'm really curious how this is gonna stack up against other business class meals. Let's dig in. Now in contrast to the starter, this main course of garlic and ginger prawns was absolutely delicious. I loved the Thai green curry sauce and it was savory with a hint of spice. I'm quite impressed with how Virgin Atlantic pulls off the Asian inspired dishes between this Thai style rice bowl and the laksa and pokey that I had back in the lounge. Let's give dessert a go. We've got an apple crumble with some pudding. I feel like it's gonna be good. Hmm. It's warm, sweet, good textures. Virgin Atlantic, the food has been top notch. Now since this was one of the rare evening services from London to New York, after the meal service, passengers were free to do whatever they want, either go to sleep or simply stay up so that they can rest upon landing. Now I considered watching some movies, but I decided to connect to the Wi-Fi and get some work done instead. Airbus A350 isn't the largest plane, and so here on the Virgin Atlantic upper class bathrooms, it is a rather small space. You know, you've got your sink, you've got your toilet over here, this bench that can fold down. Here is a little bit of amenities if you wanted to freshen up before bed. Back in the cabin, I noticed that the mood lighting had been turned off a little bit, and I thought the cabin and the seats looked even more beautiful in the natural light. At this time, however, the sun was setting outside over the Atlantic and I decided to catch some rest with about four hours left to go of the flight. Now my first impressions of the bed here on Virgin Atlantic Upper Class, it is a little bit narrow up here. Not the greatest amount of space to move around, but it is decently comfortable in terms of the mattress padding. And I mean, this is an evening flight from London to JFK, so it departs at 8 p.m. It's probably worth getting some rest before we land. I'll take a nap for a few hours, and I'll see you soon. Now, by the time I woke up, there was about 40 minutes of the flight left to go. But of course, I couldn't resist the opportunity to try some more items from the Extra Bites menu, including the signature English tea service with a few scones, clotted cream, and strawberry jam on the side. After enjoying my snack in the comfort of the Virgin Atlantic Lounge, which apparently no other business class passengers wanted to spend time in, I finally took up my spot back in my seat as we approached JFK. Now as I'm reflecting on the Virgin Atlantic upper class experience, I really have to say that I'm quite impressed by this transatlantic flight, and among airlines that fly into and out of London, I can't think of a better airline to fly with and have a better experience than here on Virgin Atlantic. That's especially the case once you consider the ground experience in London Heathrow at the Clubhouse Lounge. That's a lounge that I love to go back to and spend some more time in, but for now, 
I've really enjoyed this flight, I've really enjoyed this first flight with Virgin Atlantic, and I can't wait for more in the future. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like the Delta One experience, which I flew on the opposite route from New York to London on the outbound journey of this trip. So you can check out that video right here on screen right now, and I'll see you over there in that video.